Hey guys, Regina of ByRegina.com back here today with another hashtag. I hope I'm pointing at it. I can't really see it. Hashtag go independent interview. Okay. Today we get to talk to Sierra Holzenthal of SierraDesign.com. I'm so excited. She's one of the bloggers that I have been following for the longest time, and she is the co-founder of Pursuit Creative Conference in New Orleans. So we're headed to New Orleans today, but before we go, you know I have the corny joke of the day for you. Are you ready? Okay, here it goes. What did the vinaigrette say to someone when they opened the refrigerator door? Vinaigrette, okay? What did, what, what did they say? Close the door, I'm dressing. Get it, dressing, it's like a salad dress. <laughs> Hilarious. Let's head to New Orleans to talk to Sierra. All right, you guys, so as I said, we are here with Sierra Holzenthal. I'm so excited, this is one of my favorite bloggers. Definitely one of the people who influenced me to kind of like get back into blogging after a long, long break. So I'm so excited to be talking to her. <laughs> Thank so, you. So yeah, so if you will, just kind of introduce yourself and tell us what you do for a living. Yeah, sure, so I'm Sierra Holzenthal. Um, I have a design studio, just called after my name, the Sierra Design Studio, and I have been doing this full-time for five years now, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I was just thinking back, I was like, whoa, it's been five years. That is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, and that's what I do full-time is uh, graphic design. So that's just the majority of your income, because I know you have like an ebook or a couple of ebooks, um, out, right? Yep. The majority of my income is design, but mm -hmm. that's one of my goals is to kind of get a few more, um... I don't like to say passive income because yeah, it's not that's really, true. but <laughs> yeah, uh, more things like ebooks, and stuff products. like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so Sierra is also one of the co-founders of my new favorite conference, Pursuit Creative Conference, and that's going to be here in New Orleans, yes, October third. October third. Tell us a little bit about how that came up and came about. Um, so about two years ago, me and my sister started a local meetup group called the Made of Mind Social. Um, I was inspired after going to some bigger conferences like All Summit, and I was like, I feel like we need something a little more, more accessible and local and more often than once or twice a year. So we started doing events every other month for local creatives to get together. And then after about two years, um, I heard Justin C... <laughs> Justin Shields <laughs> um, also mentioned doing a conference and mm -hmm. so me and Christy who have been helping me with uh, Made of Mine were like we need to get together and yeah. do this <laughs> oh, I love it. so yeah it just kind of very quickly happened yeah. we just started planning and now it's about six months later and we have a week left to our Kickstarter so yeah. we're very excited that and that's Super excited. Very close to getting yeah. funded. Wow, the growth of the Kickstarter was like, yes! Oh my gosh, I can't wait to yeah. come. Um, and I think it'll be such a great, um, I guess, opportunity for everyone. And what caught me about the conference, too, first off, was the design. Did you kind of come up with the branding yes, for the conference? Yes, I did. <laughs> it's amazing, it you guys. Fun, yeah. PursuitCreativeConference.com if you have not checked it out yet. Yeah, it's amazing. Justin did the website, and yeah. we kind of all as a group like discussed our goals and everything, yeah. and I put the logo together, and then Justin kind of took it from there with the yeah. website, so... Yeah, it was a team I effort. <laughs> I love the um, the Instagram feed. It's so beautiful. I'm like, if I do a Kickstart, which actually I'm planning on doing one, I'm like, I'm going to try and be as awesome <laughs> as Sierra and the team. Oh, thank so, you. Yeah. Anyway, so tell us a little bit about um, what your favorite... You, you've been doing this for five years. Yes. It's a long time. What is your favorite part of being independent and working for yourself? Um, I would definitely have to say just the schedule freedom. Um I mean, it's one of the harder things also because you can't just like sit around doing nothing all day. Otherwise, you will fail at your business. But it's also nice to be able to take days off when, if you're just not feeling it that day yeah. or like my fiance's schedule isn't very set in stone. So if he has a random Wednesday off, it's nice to be able to Hang just out. take that day off yeah, and spend time with him and... Um, last year, I actually got to travel for seven weeks, which was an amazing oh. opportunity. I was still working while I was traveling, yeah. but I don't think I would have been able to do that if I wasn't 
working for myself. I don't think my employer would understand. <laughs> <laughs> like, get back in seven weeks. <laughs> yeah. Two months, no biggie. Just chill. Um, I think I caught that on your blog. Were you in Spain? Yeah. And different places? France and Spain, maybe. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Who does that with their life? Cool people. <laughs> Um, all right, so when did you first realize that you wanted to work for yourself, and kind of what was what was your transition plan? Did you just jump? Did you plan um, for a while? So I did not really have a plan. <laughs> I was working at an agency for about four years after I graduated uh, college. I studied graphic design, mm -hmm. and I just felt like I wasn't really learning anything else and I wasn't inspired by the work so I just knew I was at a point where I wanted to leave where I was and I wasn't exactly sure where I wanted to go mm -hmm. but we were talking about moving to Boston at the time so I was like that would be stupid for me to start looking for a new job and then just leave basically you know yeah. so I was like I'm just gonna do freelance for a little while and kind of see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I had been doing some pro bono work while I was still at the agency mm -hmm. for a local nonprofit, so I had some connections through right. that. So I basically just kind of told them, like, I'm going out on my own, y'all, so I can't really be doing this for free anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I just, they, we had built up a relationship, so they were just like, yeah, sure, we well, like you, you, so we'll. <laughs> That's awesome. So actually, free work brought you yep. kind of your first client. Which I know a lot of people say, like, don't ever do anything for free. But, but I think like, it kind of depends. Yeah. <laughs> You've, like, been doing this for five years now. Yeah. That was kind of the start yep. of Yep, and that's really where I get most of my work is word of mouth. So I yeah. think starting that way really built a base of my company so <laughs> so pro bono is not that bad you guys yeah um awesome so let me ask you this when you um were planning for the transition and you're like okay you know might move whatever um did you have any fear surrounding it like even though you had this client that was like sure we'll start paying you was it a yeah I mean I really since I didn't do any planning mm -hmm. I was just like it's going to work out. I mean, what other <laughs> option is there? Awesome. But also, of course, I was terrified. Like, what if in a month they don't have any more work for me and I haven't found other clients yet? But, I mean, luckily the word of mouth kind of pulled through Good. for me and it has yeah. been, I yeah. mean. What was so, the motivation behind starting the blog? Um, I started my blog at the very end of my time at the agency I was working for. Mm -hmm. So I just was kind of unmotivated and... It started out just like posting horrible iPhone pictures and like <laughs> saying one sentence, you know, like yeah. this is what I saw today or whatever. <laughs> so yeah, it's totally transformed since I started it. But yeah, it just kind of started as like a place to just air my creativity or like if I saw something cool that day or whatever. Yeah. So. I've no I definitely noticed that your photography on your blog is so amazing. Like Thanks. it definitely draws <laughs> me in. What kind of equipment are you using? Um, I have a Panasonic Lumix okay. camera, so uh -huh. it's nothing that fancy. It's pretty small, which is one of the reasons I love it, because <laughs> it means I'll actually carry it around. Right. Like, if I have some heavy camera, I'm just going to leave it at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so, awesome. So, yeah, I think that's the main thing, is it being easy to carry around. And... Do you kind of, like, edit them afterwards, or? Um, I usually edit them in Lightroom and Photoshop. Just, um, I have a few, like, actions set up that I just kind of, I'll edit it basically, um, just like make sure the exposure is good and all that. And then I have some actions that I use just so that they look consistent, but they do. They always yeah. look consistent. <laughs> I feel like even if I wasn't on your blog, like actually one time I was on creative market and I was like, Oh, this looks like a Sierra photo. <laughs> and then I was like, Oh, You're this like, is. <laughs> <laughs> I funny. didn't even know you were on there at that point. So, so people can buy some of your photography from creative. Market yeah. I actually right? kind of started that pretty recently. Yeah. Um, I studied photography in college, too. I kind of yeah. switched back and forth. I was like, I don't know if I want to do design or photography. And I finally picked design because I couldn't really see myself being a professional photographer. But gotcha. I still love it. So I just was like, kind of just see what happens there, you know? <laughs> like, I have all these photos anyways. Let's yeah. see if what happens if I start kind of like a stock photography side thing. So. Yeah, it's awesome. Your Instagram is awesome. <laughs> Everything you do you. is awesome. <laughs> um, so tell us about, oh yeah, okay. yeah, <laughs> check it out. I'm telling you guys, dogs like me. This is a new discovery. 
Um, so tell us about your hugest challenge since going full time, now that you've been operating for a while. Hi, Scott. Um, I think since in the beginning, I kind of just started without any planning. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like I've been playing catch up a little bit on systems and processes and stuff. Yeah. It's like, I got kind of busy and then it's like, you don't take the time for your own business. So I mm -hmm. think that's one of the major struggles I've had is just taking setting aside the time to work on my own business and not oh, just yeah. client stuff like growing the business right <laughs> it's like I'm doing it. the day-to-day -day, get it done get it done but it's like sometimes taking a step back and kind of seeing assessing yourself is definitely necessary so um what do you feel like well just tell us about I guess the general organization of like a day or week in Sierraville <laughs> if we can um so basically I I'll know what's coming up for that week. So I use uh Todoist with my mm -hmm. Gmail so that my email is not my to-do list. I can just press <laughs> the <laughs> I think we're still hooked up. Okay. I can just hit send to Todoist so it sends that email to my to-do list and then Super useful. whenever yeah I'm looking at my to-do list and I need a reference email it's still linked back so I've found that, that is awesome. very helpful. <laughs> is that a paid tool to do it? Um I use the free version. I'm okay. not sure what the upgrades are, but I've been using the free one and it's been nice. fine for me. So <laughs> free tool you guys. Okay. Yeah, perfect. and then boomerang is another oh good gosh. one yeah. to remind me to it's like you forward the emails back to yourself, I guess is yeah. what it is, yeah, basically. I mean, that's all it, it's like personal assistant-ish. Yeah. Like, by the way, you didn't respond <laughs> to this email yet, or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, that's been really helpful in remembering stuff without using my email as a to-do list. Gotcha. So, tell us, um, what are some of your favorite portfolio items, either blog posts or design projects that you've done over the last few years? Let's see. So some of my favorite projects are always doing logos and brand identities for like small creative businesses yeah. and I just finished up one that I haven't even posted yet because it's still like being delivered. Yeah. I yeah. sent the logo but we're working on like all the other stuff. Gotcha. Um, it's for an event company on Martha's Vineyard which is a friend of mine who actually started her company recently. So Neat. we did like gold foil letterpress business cards oh which gosh. I just got like yesterday oh and they're wow. really awesome. Yeah. So yeah that was a really fun project because she needed, I love when people need like the whole spectrum of yes. everything because yes. then I feel like I can really get it. Uh, like get their branded identity. It's not just like here's a logo now go right. do whatever you feel like with it. Right. <laughs> I really like being able to help with like social media and like her um, contracts and business cards and just like oh, everything All of it. from top to bottom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So you you have done a wide variety of design. I've seen like makeup packaging that you've yep. done before, all kinds of stuff. But do you feel that you've kind of narrowed down to your favorite being working with creative businesses? Or um, I would say that's definitely my favorite, but I still do a lot of other stuff yeah. too. Yeah. Um, do you still work with nonprofits or? I do work with a lot, yeah, because that's really how I got started. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm still passionate about helping those local companies. So, yeah, yeah that's um, definitely a field that I'm interested in staying with just because I like to support the local businesses and help my city. <laughs> <laughs> Which is with a cool beautiful stuff. Thing. <laughs> I've seen so much new cool stuff in New Orleans this time yeah. around. Like, I'd only been here once before, and now I'm, like, understanding more of the city. And I'm like, <laughs> I can get with this New yeah. Orleans thing. Um, what area of town are you guys doing the actual conference in? Um, it's going to be in Broadmoor and um, Propeller, which is, like, a shared workspace. So nice. you can rent desks All and creative. offices and stuff. So yeah. yeah. And, yeah, we thought that was a really good fit for our first year. Love um, it. And this is something that you definitely plan to repeat every year. That hopefully. is the plan, yes. yes. <laughs> so excited. If guys. everything goes well this year, which is pretty much on track, so. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I, like, literally could not be more excited yeah, about it. I know. We're happy you're yeah. going to be at it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to be there, you guys. So come check it out. Um, so tell us, are there things that, now looking back on it, obviously you've been successful at this for a few years now. But looking back on it, are there things you would have done differently um, before your switch or when you switched or when you first started out? Anything you would have done differently? Um, 
I think, like I mentioned, I would have kind of got some things handled up front. Like, I didn't have a separate bank account for probably, like, two and a half years. Yeah. I didn't have an LLC or, like, no separation because I was just like, oh, yeah, I'm just, like, freelance. I'm just doing this yeah. little thing, you know? Yeah. I wasn't thinking about it, like, this is my business and yeah. my livelihood and this is, like, the rest of my life, basically. Right. <laughs> I was just like, oh, yeah, let's do these projects as they come in. And yeah. I didn't really, like... I feel like have a plan or strategize as much as I should have up front, but I guess I didn't really know if I was going to be successful or I was like, I might move to Boston and get a real job or like, <laughs> I might, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so what did you use? Like a lot of, a lot of it was word of mouth for you. Yeah. What are some of the platforms that you're seeing now are effective to kind of promote yourself online? Well, definitely my blog, I, I get a lot of people just because, um, since I have so much content, since I've been yeah. doing it for a while, my That's SEO insane. is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. and, like I pop up when people are searching and sure. my portfolio items definitely help having that as a part of my website. Um, I think that's always helpful when people see something that they can kind of resonate with yeah. on your website. So sure. they reach out and like feel that connection already before they even email you or anything. It's a part of like humanizing your brand, yeah. just like being online. How many, could you even guess how many blog posts you have up on your oh, site right now? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Has it been like five or six years? Um, yeah, it's been probably six years. In the beginning, it was very random and yeah. like... I don't even know what I was talking about <laughs> back then. <laughs> and then, yeah, for a while I was posting, I think the most I ever posted was three times a week because I knew that was all I could handle without yeah. like, out being just like posting Crazy. posts, yeah. you know? Yeah. And now I, I post about once a week, if that. Yeah. So I'm trying to, yeah, scale back because it's very time consuming. <laughs> yes. yeah. And I don't ever want to just post to be posting. So yeah, right. I'm trying to kind of be a little bit more strategic about and things like that. Did you ever have a time where you kind of like went back and deleted old posts or have you left them up there? Just I think of... I've only deleted, a f or I think when I transferred to WordPress, uh -huh. I probably lost some of the beginning ones. Okay. But, um, and I think I've maybe deleted like five random ones, but most of the old ones, even it's though they're embarrassing, are still there. Are still there. <laughs> Because so, sometimes I just like to go back myself and look, even if like, no one yeah. else is going to look at them. <laughs> you guys, like, don't go back to yeah, <laughs> Um How have you found, I noticed that every so often you'll do like guest posts. How have you found those to be effective for your brand? Do you like doing those? And how Me posting you... on other people's? Or oh people no, posting people online? post on okay. you, sorry. <laughs> Let me be clear, that would help. Yeah. How did um, you found that helped? I mean, I think it definitely helps to bring just a different perspective. It's still, like, when someone else writes a post, I'm definitely going to read over it and make sure, like, our ideals align. And yeah. usually I'm like, oh, my God, this is, like, totally what I would be saying. Yeah. Anyway, so this is awesome, awesome to have somebody else, you know, their perspective and right. point of view. And I think it's good just to network within the blogging com community or design community. So it's been fun if... Nothing else. <laughs> yeah. So you um, set up your Made in Mind meetups. Yeah. That, um, were happening once every, every other month. Every other month. Um, and then you wrote a book actually on creating like meetup guide on yeah. how to start your own meetup. <laughs> yeah, which I thought was awesome, and it's beautifully designed. Oh, I you. bought a copy. <laughs> um, so, do you have any tips for people, whether online or in real life, if someone's really just getting started in this life and they want to work for themselves? What's the best way to kind of get to know people? Because I would imagine that word of mouth sometimes happens through people who know you and they're right. telling you know. Right. So, how do you really start to Network, um, so to speak. I think now there's so many ways to do it on social media, like Twitter chats and Periscope mm. and all these things that are just like quick ways to connect. And then... <laughs> Scrappy really wants to be in this video, you guys. <laughs> just letting you know. <laughs> and um, just finding any kind of local smaller meetup, which yeah. is why I started the um, Made in Mind Social, just because I felt like we didn't necessarily have one for creatives in New Orleans. We have a lot of more tech-related yeah. things that have kind of already started. Um, and then going to bigger conferences is awesome. Okay. 
like pursued. Hint <laughs> <laughs> and a wink. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, I've been to Alt Summit a few times, and that was really great to meet people and kind of stayed in touch with a lot of those people over the years. And, um, yeah, even, I mean, it depends on what you're trying to do, but you can even work for um, agencies locally, do freelance for agencies, or just kind of see what kind of work is out there where you can collaborate with people. You don't always have yeah. to just be working alone either. <laughs> On your own, playing solo. <laughs> yeah. Um, so tell us, after, and um, actually out of everyone we've interviewed, you've probably been working for yourself like one of the longest amounts of time. Um, so tell us, I guess, even after all this time, is it still meaningful for you? Did you make the right decision to kind of branch out on your own? Um, and what does it like really, really mean to you on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, I definitely think I made the right decision. It's not always easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like a lot of people don't necessarily understand. They're like, what are you doing all day? I don't know. What are you doing? <laughs> you know, pajamas, like, who's paying Netflix? you? What? Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's, it's hard to explain sometimes. Yeah. And it's hard to be motivated at times. But overall, it's definitely worth it. <laughs> worth the struggle. Yeah. <laughs> struggle as well. Yeah. <laughs> so then, um, if someone's trying to get in this, if you just have one actionable tip, like a place to start for them, what right. would you tell them? Um, Hi, Scrappy. Hi, Scrappy. You guys, we got, so, we got dog action done here. <laughs> really, I started out at an agency. I studied graphic design and I started an agency and I really can't imagine that I'd be where I was if I didn't have that experience. Okay. So I think that definitely helped just um, being so, around those other people with the same passions and um, more experienced than me. Like at the agency, people were, I mean, had been there for, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> this truck is real. Hi, Scrappy. Um, and yes, this little lady is very distracting <laughs> when I'm working from home. <laughs> Oh my gosh, but so cute. Okay, sorry you guys, we're, we're paying attention now. <laughs> so anyway, working at the agency. So yeah, I mean, I think just being around people that have more experience than you mm -hmm. and kind of have been it, in it for a while can really help um, push you forward more than you would just go by yourself. Okay. So not a bad idea to work in the industry, whatever I don't, you're... I don't <gasps> think so. <laughs> okay, well, I just want to thank Scrappy and thank you for taking some time to yeah. like be with us today. I think it's just so meaningful for people to see other people who are doing it in real life and for five years, no less. Um, so anyway, thank you for spending thank you. time with us. Okay, bye, y'all.